Hey everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guest today is Suhas Uliar. He's senior VP of product management at Oracle Health. Welcome, Suhas. Thank you, John, for having me. We appreciate it. Yeah, excited to be here at the Oracle Health Conference, mm -hmm. the first Oracle Health yes. <laughs> Conference. Uh, in Vegas. For, yeah, <laughs> which is even better since it's my hometown. But uh, I want to talk about some of the AI announcements and stuff you're working mm -hmm. on. But before mm -hmm. we go there, tell us a little bit about yourself and Oracle Health. Sure, so uh, I run product management for uh, AI and healthcare. Uh, I've been with Oracle for about 10 years. Okay. Uh, I joined Oracle to, to jumpstart the AI for Oracle. Uh, oh, and uh, wow. in 2016, we had our first Oracle digital assistant, which was the AI powered chatbot. And sort of that sort of took us to where we are today to apply that to healthcare. Uh, and now I'm part of the healthcare organization, really excited. It's part of uh, the, the, the certain rebranding called Oracle Health. And we have a number of other uh, verticals within that or disciplines like life sciences and so on and so forth. So this is a very big investment area for Oracle, as you probably have heard from Larry. So excited to be here and excited to be part of Oracle Health. Yeah, no, it's a big change. I mean, I think it's a big change for certain users as well, but I think it's a good one because you're bringing all that AI knowledge. How is Oracle Health kind of approaching AI in, in your products and your solutions? I would say very uh, pragmatically. Mm -hmm. deliberate and specific. And what I mean by that is uh, you could go to any conference or read any paper. There's a lot of talk about AI that's going to change the world. Yeah, and marketers have ruined the term AI. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and in the way I, I sort of draw parallels <clears throat> of AI to you know, the seven stages of mankind or life, where okay. you know, at one stage you have infancy and the other is dot age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like uh, October 2020, AI just sort of matured from adolescence to young adults. Uh -huh. Still got a lot to learn, right? Yeah. Uh, it's smart enough, but still got a lot to learn. And so we're approaching it with very specific use cases because our customers are telling us, look, you know, people have come and talked to us, oh, hey, I can do this, hey, I can do that, that's great, but what is the serious impact? What are you going to deliver that's tangible that I can actually hold on and do something? And so we spend a lot of time looking at where we can get the maximum impact for our customers. And clinical burnout is the main re thing that we are focusing on right now, which is how do we enable clinicians to get off administrative work and automate a lot of their day-to-day -day tasks so they can spend time like you and I talking with their patients. <laughs> so that's sort of what we focused on. I mean, doctors will miss all that pajama time charting. Know, isn't it? They have to, they'll, they'll be able to discover their family now. <laughs> they'll realize their family now. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, there is that burnout and that, that is a major problem. What are some of the AI announcements that you've been making here that users of Millennium or other Oracle Health Solution uh, you know, are going to see? You know, I, I've written about some of them, but I'd love to right. hear your perspective, what are the big AI announcements here? So to this, uh, this uh, conference, we focus primarily on the clinical digital assistant uh, that's using generative AI to summarize patient records for the doctors. So when they are ready to see and they're doing the pre-visit uh, analysis or chart review, that we can summarize it for them so they don't have to hunt around 25 clicks to find the data. So using that all embedded in a what we refer to as a multimodal interface. Hmm. And what we mean by that is, you know, we want to have inputs that could be either voice, it's a voice first, um, and either voice or touch or, or keyboard. It's a preference that they may have, mm -hmm. um, but be able to just talk to the digital assistant and also get responses back either in voice uh, or in a, in a very rich UI. And so we're trying to get them away from the 35, 40 clicks they have to do to get data, to be just able to say, okay, you know, what was the patient's, uh, show me the vitals for the patient. What was the light blood pressure? Show me the three A1C, hemoglobin A1Cs. And with that also provide some insights into it. So being able to say, yes, there's a trend of the hemoglobin going in the wrong direction. Perhaps the medication may not be appropriate or maybe we want to have a change in medication. From there to, uh, and this is a fully integrated solution that also includes what we refer to as conversational assistant. So, you know, being able to listen in and participate in the conversation with the patient. Mm. So there's a lot of solutions out there in the market that are just listening uh, and, and sort of creating notes. But we know that we're in front of, we're the front of a patient, the device is listening. I could might as well ask the device, hey, Oracle, what's the, show me the x-ray. So you don't have to switch off to something else and, and lose your interaction with your patient, yeah. right? So we'll be able to do both. Both, right? So participate. And then finally from there is what we call the action assistant, where at the end of the conversation, of course, we're going to generate a draft note. But we also understand all the discussions that have happened that include things like follow-up actions, medication ordering, lab ordering, you know, 
you know, perhaps a reminder to call the patient after a week. So we want to take away all that administrative burden and the typing that they have to do. And this is what the clinical digital assistant does. And we have so many use cases, but like I said, we want to be very pragmatic. We want to be focused first on ambulatory, get, get that right, and then sort of move forward. So we're enabling that. The other thing we're also doing is for the patient facing. So taking mm -hmm. our uh, digital assistant that we've, uh, we have over 800 plus customers that are using like folks like Costco and Office Depot that are using it for customer service. Okay. And giving that same, like you and I as consumers have the great service when we go to our banks or to retailers, but we don't when we go to healthcare. And so being able to bring that patient self-service so we can unburden the front office as well. Uh, and as a result, the clinicians as well by giving patients self-service capabilities like scheduling, being able to be notified of, uh, of their upcoming um, visit. Plus, you know, for instance, if you have an upcoming lab draw, a blood draw, make sure that you're fasting before you come. So all the small, small things that can help the patient be better prepared. So those are the two primary focus areas for us in AI. That's interesting, the patient focus side of it. And I was actually really impressed by the voice interface that was demoed to be able to access the data. And what's fascinating is we've, We've known that was coming because yeah. surgeons have wanted it forever. Because when they're all you know, you know, know, cleaned up, ready to do surgery, yeah. they can't touch, right? right. And so right. they've always wanted the voice interface to say, oh, you know, tell me the details for this patient. And so we knew that was coming, but it's interesting. Now it's going to be available for everyone. Absolutely. And even for nurses. Yeah. And so I think that's fascinating. But let's dive into you know, what I call kind of the clickless visit that you demoed on stage as yeah. well. You, you know, it's in this ambient clinical voice space that we've right. covered a lot on Healthcare IT Today. Right. You know, it was demonstrated on stage as kind of this clickless environment. Which, Correct. You know, people hate clicks. We, yeah. we, we know that, right? Uh, but, you know, is that the goal or what is the goal for this physician documentation? And what's that going to look like in the future? Is it all voice or is it going to be a mix? I and mean, it's interesting you said multimodal. Yeah, well. I still believe it's multimodal. And my favorite line there is the best interface is having no interface at all. Mm. Uh, I stole it from Google, but that's sort of, the, you know, sure. that, that's what I believe in. And, you know, in my day to day life, I just use voice commands for everything, you know, with Siri and, 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 and my Alexa and so on and so forth. And I believe that we'll, the models are getting much more stronger. So when you look at generative AI, we think about chat GPT, but it's a lot more than that. The large language mm -hmm. models can handle amazing speech capabilities, uh, being able to do what we call diarization, where you can have multi-speaker and we can clearly identify who said what, mm -hmm. where then, right? Now, it's going to take some time for us to get it. I mean, as I said, we are focused on ambulatory first, then we're going to specializations. Um, and so as we go into these specializations, we'll need more data and, and the real, the crux of the problem that we face, to be honest, is getting data. Now, mm. it's not the EHR patient data. We've got that de-identified, we've got that scrubbed, it's BI, PHI compliant, but we don't have that conversational data because no mm. one, when doctors did dictation, it was them dictating. Sure. Nobody recorded a conversation with the patient and doctor. So now the challenge that we face is to be able to get that gold data so we can train our models to understand, and it's more sort of understanding the speech and the voice and what who said what rather than what they said because we're able to take that and translate that to medical lingo but that conversation data is missing yeah well and and even if you had the conversations from every patient visit what we've seen in, in our coverage of this space is that doctors change it correct so you know when they're doing a physical exam and they observe something Normally, they just observe it and then they document the EHR later. Correct. But now they need to voice it, voice right? It. Or exactly. if they're, you know, they know that they're going to prescribe, you know, 500 milligrams of moxicillin daily. You know? Yes, <laughs> like yes. They have to voice, voice it. So, it, yeah. You know, th there's an interesting uh, chicken and egg right, problem right, there, right? Right, right, yeah. And so, yeah, we do provide that multimodal and that's why we created it multimodal so that we give the choice to the doctor on how they best want to update it. Mm -hmm. No, it's powerful. I mean, this is the most exciting thing I think doctors have seen come to their interface yes, <laughs> yes. in a long time. Are, are there some other non-AI projects you're working on that you're kind of excited about? I only get excited about AI projects, to be honest, John. But, but no, fundamentally... Is there a project that doesn't have AI? Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I would say, yes, oh, okay. there are projects where we are fixing the current stuff. Fair enough. <laughs> right? fair enough. I would call it bug fixing. Which, yeah, but that's it, fair. But, okay. you know, I mean, when I look at it across the board, I mean, yeah, it was it was very fascinating. My daughter is doing computer science at UW, mm -hmm. and the other day uh, she, she, she was getting ready for something, and I said, 
I'm not sure why you're doing computer science. You may not have a job in the future. And I completely freaked her out. But the reality is that could happen. Yeah. You know, we're generating code. I mean, Larry talked about using Apex to generate code. Yeah, that's a reality that we have to face. But uh, yeah, I don't see any project where AI is not embedded. I always find some way to get AI embedded in the projects. Well, isn't that the most exciting thing is that AI is unleashing all this creativity. I mean, my fiance is a second grade teacher and she's using it with students right. that need to write a talk that they forgot to do because they were graduating. <laughs> You're like, and so it's almost ubiquitous it uh, how it, totally it can is. be leveraged and used. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You know, Oracle Health is such a global company. I mean, Cerner yep. was starting to go global, but mm -hmm. now, you know, with Oracle involved, it's just dramatically going to accelerate that, I think. Absolutely. Do you see these solutions working globally, or, or do you see some kind of international differences that have to be taken into account? It, there is, certainly. Um, so, in fact, you know, we, we met with a number of international clients. Cerner has lots of international clients, mm -hmm. and I think about, I don't know exactly the number of countries, about eight to ten countries are represented when we met them. Okay. Um, there are two aspects to it. One is there's certainly regulations that are country specific, uh, that like the governments sure. that so we have to uh, comply to with that. The data and Correct. Privacy. And also sort of their their, their processes and their workflows. Mm. At the end of the day, when you strip everything out, a doctor seeing a patient and taking care of them is the same. That's exactly what <laughs> all, everyone says. Like whether it's in Dubai or UK or here, it's the same thing. But what, what burdens them is the governance on top of that, right? And so we have to be um, conscious of that and we have a regulatory process that go. The other thing is the language. Now, when you look at physicians, clinic, clinicians, they're all highly educated and they're able to use Cerner in English and update it, that's not a problem. But when you're meeting the patient, it's in the local language. Mm -hmm. So back to the whole ambient listening and the translation, we need to be able to train our models, our speech models to recognize each language. Now our underlying platform is language is multilingual. So we, sure. today, and in fact, we have digital assistant being implemented in over 35, 40 countries. The issue is we don't have the medical conversations happening. Mm. And so now we're working with each of our customers there to be able to get that kind of data so we can train the models for that. Yeah, it is interesting, like even culturally, uh, it's the same, you know, doctors hate documenting no matter where they are. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because, you know, they are trained to take care of patients. That's what they, yeah. it, it, in a core to them, that's what they want to do. It's just that we put all the shackles to make it hard on them. Yeah. Well, it's an exciting time to see uh, all that they're implementing. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure Oracle Health is grateful to have your expertise uh, coming in after all your years of experience and, and as this really accelerates. So thanks for sharing these ideas and perspectives. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Uos. Thank you, John.